Good people, what's good? What's going on? You guys listen to your favorite podcast, Connecting the Dots. I'm Caleb Smith. I am Kimmy Coco. And thanks for coming back. Kim, what's been going what's on this past week? going on, everybody? Um, nothing. Nothing? I mean, not with me personally. You're about to be on TV tomorrow, though. Again. Maybe for two seconds. <laughs> You're a superstar. That's crazy. Yeah. I saw is. myself on the commercial thing, and that might be all they show. Okay. Hey, that's still something. Um, still something. You're graduating. Yeah, yeah. We took uh, grad pictures yesterday, so it was crazy. Are you going to decorate your cap? I might. I mean, I don't know. I might. Nip's, nip on there? I don't know about that way. <laughs> but, I mean, hey, I, I mess with Nip, that but I don't know. Yeah. You know, I, I don't want to be generic and, you know, do what everybody else is doing. So, I might not even decorate the cap because, honestly, like, I could care less when it comes to really? you know, stuff like that. I just want to walk across the stage and call it a day. Wow, keep it that's exciting. Yeah, it is. Like, it's flown by, so. Are you going to go to grad school? No, I'm not. Because, I mean, for journalism, it's, you know, it's pretty much pointless. Like, there's yeah. no purpose of going to grad school. Because, really, you don't even need a bachelor's like that when it comes to um, right. journalism anymore. But, yeah, so, you know, I'm going to just get that, and then that's it. Um, that was one of the things we were going to talk about, journalism. Yeah, it is. So this week we were going to talk about um, the U.S. being determined one of the most dangerous places for journalism, for yeah. journalists. Mm -hmm. um, the Mueller report came out. Um, Beyonce came out. Yeah, that wasn't a documentary. I know I'm going to probably get a lot of backlash from the Beehive, but that was not a documentary. It was just like a live performance. That's it. Yeah, that's all what it was, that's which it. everybody already saw. Um, but Russell Wilson... He's corny. I um, love Russ, but he's corny. <laughs> that video was terrible. The church fire and just um, and Morehouse. Yeah, that's opening be their doors to um, transgenders. Transgenders. So mm -hmm. that was just some of the topics we wanted to talk about this week. <clears throat> we have um, only Izzy and Sid, so I should have went live on my phone. I could go live on my phone. Yeah. Um, to get some more in, some more uh, feedback from people. But the big thing that did happen this week was the Mueller report coming out. Yeah. Did anybody read it? It's been everywhere all the time. It's kind of exhausting somewhat. So for like the people that's the, you know, layman somewhat who don't even know too much about it, what exactly is it? And two, you know, at the same time, like it's always being posted on like CNN, um, TMZ, of course. So like what exactly is the report? The so um, over the last few years after Remember when Jeff Sessions got fired? Yeah, yeah. They prompted the FBI to investigate the Trump, not his whole presidency, but his mm -hmm. campaign. Right. And the Russian meddling in the campaign. Right. So he, the, the investigation went on for two years. So basically what he found out during the investigation is what the Mueller report is. It is 400 and some <laughs> odd pages. It's crazy. Two volumes, and it has some evidence and some notes on there. So basically, to sum up what he found out, is the Russians did get involved in the 2016 election. I'll read a little bit about what they found. You know, some of the things he said. Um, we've talked about this before because... Georgia was one of the states that the FBI had to come out and tell because some of the things they couldn't really say during the investigation. Mm -hmm. But Georgia was one of the states that they definitely warned and said that Russia was meddling in our elections. At the time, Secretary of State, BK, we call him Brian Kemp, who's now our governor in Georgia, he, deci he decided not to go any further with any, um, go forward with anything with that. He was just mm -hmm. like, yeah, no, it's probably not that serious. So he just let what the FBI found out go. Right. Um, but it was way deeper than that. We know they came out and they were spying on, well, they hacked Hillary Clinton's campaign emails. <laughs> they, the list of people that were implicated goes on and on and on. He goes into detail, of course, because it was a two-year investigation and it's 400 some odd pages, but if you really want to read it, you can read it. Yeah. Um, it is crazy the lengths that they went to. It doesn't seem like you should read it because it's like, what is it going to tell me? But it, mm -hmm. it reads very well, actually. It kind of reads wow. like a book. I didn't read it all. I did read some of it, but I kind of knew 
You know what I mean? Because yeah. we've been following everything that was going on, but this just tells you what's been going on. <sighs> yeah. 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 The I so the Russia hacking operation. So this is it'll tell you what page to go to to find some of the stuff too, the details mm. that went on. So basically it's a cyber war. <laughs> and if you ask me, the Republicans are either too old to understand that that is just as dangerous as a physical war, right, right. or they just don't care yeah. because it's that serious mm -hmm. and they seem like they're not going to do anything about it. Yep. The reason why Trump's people are now going out there saying, oh, well, you know, must not be anything wrong. They didn't find anything because I'm not in jail or whatever <laughs> right. like that. Yep. That's not the case because, no. you know, he's a sitting president, so yeah. you can't. Yeah. arrest him but what he did was take the report summarize it and give it to congress who does have the power to impeach him and just recommend impeachment mm -hmm. so wow. out of all the findings he's giving it to them and he's saying to them like this is what happened so you guys do what you got to do mm -hmm. and i if you're not going to impeach him for doing this who is there going to be to impeach like Nobody. this is one of the worst things that you can do yeah yeah you wanted to impeach Bill Clinton. Y'all probably not old enough to remember this. Yeah, but Monica but Lewinsky. Bill Clinton <laughs> was getting head in the Oval Office yeah. by Monica Lewinsky. And I guess because the Republicans couldn't find anything that was, like, wrong. Yeah, because I don't even see how that's But now I'm starting to see impeached. a pattern. Because yeah. just like now with the heartbeat bill and all that, when you can't <clears> find, as a Republican, I mm -hmm. guess this is what their strategy is. If you can't right. find anything that's being done wrong, mm -hmm. they go for moral and ethical mm -hmm. things. You okay, know what I mean? yeah, I see what you're saying. Like, if I can't find any criminal thing You try to wrong, find something petty. I'll find something uh, morally... You're cheating on your wife. Something. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I think that this is why so many people are afraid that Trump could possibly be reelected. How? Because... How? Because... He's not even supposed to be there now. The only reason why the he's point. not in yeah. jail is because he's I the feel president it. and you I can't feel arrest it. him. But Congress... They don't want to waste their time impeaching him. He's only got 18 months left. Right. So that's going to fuel the, the next campaign. Mm -hmm. And I get that. And if we just look at it, though, with Trump, he wasn't even supposed to be elected for the first term. And it's like right now, Republicans ride for him or either they're afraid of him. But either way, they will be supporting Trump. So, I mean, I think if we go out and vote, of course, but at the same time, I think that he's a very powerful force. And I think it's very possible that he could come back and be reelected. It's very possible. And if he does, it's not going to be the end of the world, though. We're still going to be all right. So some of the information on here is redacted. Mm -hmm. But it's not a lot that's redacted. You could, gener you could get a general idea as to what went on. Yeah. And he should not be in his position. <laughs> I agree. I agree. So I know that they don't want to impeach him, but I, I don't think there's going to be anybody that could do much worse than what he did. Right. <laughs> and it wasn't even the fact that, you know, his campaign kind of cheated their way in. Mm -hmm. It was the links that he went to to mm -hmm. cover it up. Right. Where the crime falls. Right. So what do He's you guys think? You think that they should bother impeaching him or you think that it's you, too late. they should just get a new? Yeah, I think it's a little Put the too energy late. into well, getting um, the new person? How, how many uh did was Bill I said Bill Cosby Bill Clinton <laughs> did he have two terms did he get yeah. reelected so he was in his second term yeah I mean I think it's too late to try to impeach Trump I think if it do if if they do go forward with that process it'll probably be in his second term if he mm -hmm. get in so if he but goes out and he only got what a year yeah eighteen months eighteen months I mean yeah. what I mean I don't really think. But if you don't impeach him, which is what you are really supposed to do, you're supposed to keep an eye out on the executive branch of the government. That's what your that's what your job is. The guy has been found of committing crimes and being in cahoots with a foreign government. Like, do the street? If this was a in the street, you on this block trying to set me up with dudes from this other block so no the same i get rules it i apply? get it i don't mm -hmm. think it's i don't think it's right but i just feel like it's it's too late because how long is that impeachment process right i mean it takes forever you're right it's That's probably a waste <laughs> so of like, time yeah. but it it's the principle to, i get it it's the principle it's, it's not even yeah. that bill clinton was not impeached physically it's just that the impeachment proceedings were held mm -hmm. so at least put those in place yeah 
so that it could go on his record. Because if you don't imp- if you don't do that for him, who you, who are you gonna do it for? Yeah, because it's These like are the he's done the we worst. elected we elected you as a local representative, as a state congressperson, to look after and make sure that the guy that's in the executive branch is doing what he's supposed to do. Right. He's not. So that is your job. That is right. the only job that you really have power to do. And that's why it we turned over control from the Democrats mm-hmm. to the Democrats from the Republicans. Mm-hmm. So But I, I mean like I understand where you're coming from, but I think mm-hmm. at the same time it's just for the people anyway, it's waking the people up. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. now I think this whole Trump situation, I think it was a good uh, it was good. Mm-hmm. It, was, yeah. it was a blessing in disguise, it I would say because up. it woke people up yeah. and now people like they're talking about Trump. Even mm-hmm. if people don't really know what's going on, they still saying F Donald Trump. Right. Or people but see, still that feel part the urge to about vote. you saying like, well, they don't even know what's going on. Because if this was any other country, but people would be out in the streets tearing it's, it's up stuff. It's easy to say that. It's easy to say that. Because how long have, have you ever lived in another country? Right. I see it all the time. But that's that's what the media. That's a narrative. Yeah. No, I see it all the time. You Where? read it now that we have social media. You could go on Twitter. You could go that's on. A nar- I'm sure people. People still think America is the American, the American dream, like because that's what they see. Right. And I mean, of course, they got people that's that's riding for their country, just like they got people like you that's riding mm-hmm. for the, you know, for what you feel is right. Right. But I just think this whole situation that woke everybody up. Mm-hmm. I feel like people are actually gonna go to the polls. Like, yeah. Me, I was a person that was kind of, you know, I didn't mm-hmm. really care about voting. Right. I'm not gonna say I care about it now, but I, on a local level, I care because yeah. I understand it a lot more now. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely oh, something shit. that I, I I feel like I'm gonna take part in, especially with this situation and just seeing how, you know how, how it had a local election affects you. Right. So big facts. I just think it woke I woke it woke everybody up. Mm-hmm. So the Republicans, I guess they're trying to move the country into more of a conservative direction. Big time. Um, yeah. With abortions and everything, <sighs> it's like we're kind of going back in time if you think about it, but. It's, it seems like, and you know, I saw, I saw a poll. I saw a poll that said that um, forty-nine percent of Georgians are with the abortion ban. They well, are, they are for it. Just like what you know, we express every week. People have to understand that Atlanta the isn't rural Georgia. Areas. Atlanta is not Georgia. Once you get outside of Atlanta, Georgia is a predominantly white state. The rural areas. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. You could just go twenty minutes outside of Atlanta, and it's going to be a completely different world. You'll start seeing Confederate flags, all that stuff. So I think that I saw one the other day at the yeah. parking lot at my job. I hadn't seen one in a long time. Yeah, I saw one. You remember uh, the Georgia Dome used to have a Confederate flag on top of it in Atlanta. So this is Atlanta. Like people think of you know the black people, the Maynard Jacksons of the world, but before all that stuff, and even still, Atlanta is the heart of the South, and Georgia is a very white racist state. Trump, he came down here for a reason during uh, the National College uh, football game. I think it was like two years ago or a year before last when Georgia played Alabama and it was here. Trump, you know, he came for a reason. It was his people that was down here. So we got a lot of work to do. The rural the areas are really, I mean, I just, I don't know. Yeah. Their way of life is was what their decisions are based on. They're defending their way of life. Right, right. And everybody else is trying to defend theirs. Right. But I don't see anybody that claims to be so pro America could see all this stuff going on with him and, and still support I think, it. It's and just, still support him. And then more, I think it's I think the it's wording more they, too. They just like I think a lot of people just not saying anything. Mm-hmm. It's beside, like they're oh, not really su- not they're the not necessarily that. supporting him still. They're just not saying anything. Yeah. Like, oh. But at the same time, like as far like who was like we we talked about it, I think a couple of weeks ago. Well, what's another who is another candidate that we feel can take that that we feel is we we would want to be our leader? Right, right. There's so many people vying for that. That's <laughs> what I'm saying I, because we talked about a lot of. We have to, but come we don't. It's, and, it's not one well, person. Joe Biden we still have to choose to one. Oh yeah, we, we hear this week. Joe Biden, and he's gonna be one of the first people in a long time to announce his candidacy as a front runner. Like they already know, as soon as Joe Biden announces, it's a wrap. he's just waiting for shoulder gate to pass by. <laughs> yeah. The lady that said that, yeah. she touched. Nah. He touched her on the show. Oh, yeah. Don't. Oh yeah. When I get famous, don't sexual um, harassment. Don't too. tell I yeah, touched you. you. Right. <laughs> Inappropriate. Right. Oh, somebody dropped something. What's going on downstairs? Out there? 
Oh, yeah, but um, <laughs> so Joe Biden, what do you guys think? I like him, but at the same time, I think people are becoming more educated about the things that he's done in the past. Listen, y'all. Look, I don't have an issue with it. I'm just saying that people we are can't becoming educated. Everybody. No, I'm not with that Politics at all. Politics is a dirty Yeah, business. like, bro, you're going to get your hands dirty. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you have to in the we know yeah and let's not start like we did mm -hmm. last time mm -hmm. and pick we have to pick the lesser of two evil. right like, we gotta like find right. somebody and get this guy out yeah but can, but can you imagine the roasting that's gonna go on during the debates this year when trump how do you stand in front of people and like really try to get this job back after all of this but kim i'm telling There's you but he doesn't have, have to try he can he can't have I was, if he i was running for president if i was debating him I trump would be doesn't up there with the Mueller report but it still doesn't mean anything and i was like if that you doesn't mean turn to page kim, i'm telling you xyz and i would have kim. him stand there and defend himself hey i promise you it doesn't mean anything I pick look out of think that about this report. this man literally said he would grab somebody by the vagina right and white women the majority of white women still voted for him he can do no wrong. It doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, white supremacists and yeah. people who love white America will do whatever it means. Even if it's voting for somebody that you don't like, they will still get him in there rather than having somebody else who they don't like. He got so, his followers. Right. They're going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Just like yeah. how when we were with Obama. Obama, he could have done something. And it's and still like, like, you know, we'll give him a pass. <laughs> right. Right. And they got that same energy. The Chicago, the Chicago Tribune did an article um, back in 2018, and it was talking about how white women vote. People think white women vote for whoever their husband votes for. <laughs> and so that was, they were breaking it down. They were saying, no, that's not true or whatever, but. The voting says otherwise. Yeah, I'm telling you. With, okay, back to Joe Biden though. Mm -hmm. Me personally, I really, the, as, the most I know about Joe Biden, I know he was with he was the vice president for Obama. Right. As far as his policies, what is his, what are his policies? He I haven't for, looked into it. I don't Joe know. Joe Biden is from a lower middle class working background. He runs all his, I guess, whenever he runs or whenever he comes up with policies, the policies that he is for are always for working class people. Mm. So it's kind of the same base as Trump's base. But I would say they may be a little more liberal because I think he's from like Pennsylvania, which I don't know. Pennsylvania has been surprising me. Some of the stuff that I see going Depends. to Pennsylvania because Pennsylvania yeah. is on the other side of New Jersey and it's just different. I'm, just, I'm learning, you know, mm. but, um, so he is the same base, but he's more real. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just don't, because again, I mean, I as want far us to, as I, I want us to, I, I don't want us to, to vote out popularity. Yeah, and I was I saying the same. Biden thing. is a front runner because of popularity. Well, we have and 18 months left. It's correlation with Obama. Talking about the election, but that's what I'm saying. I want to. That's why I'm waiting. To, I want to hear what Biden is talking about. Right. Before Not, I just say oh, I'm voting for Biden <laughs> with Obama. There you go. Because at the end of the day. Me personally, I voted for Obama because he was black. I was right. young. I was eight. That was my first election. So it was like, right. oh, it's a black president. Make history. I didn't know nothing. All I knew was change. Yeah. When that his slogan, change. Yeah. That's the only thing I knew about I his, hope. you know, I never looked into it, but I voted for him because he was black. There you go. I feel like the Trump people voted for Trump because it was Trump. They didn't really look into it. And I think now these next elections going forward into the future, we're going to actually start looking into what that these policy. people stand for. Well, yeah. you remember how we were saying that um, people are just, people do vote popular for popular. And I think, and I think like, like the, you know, the, um, the generations of being Democrats and the generations, mm -hmm. I think that's going to die. People just going to vote for the person that's, Whoever. that's saying the right thing, like Republican or Democrat, no yep. matter who you are. Like, yeah. like one, one election you might vote Republican, mm -hmm. the next election you might vote Democrat. I think yep. it's just about who's, who's looking to lead the country in the right direction. Hey, I, I think it agree. should be like that anyway. Most definitely, most definitely. Because again, we just can't vote blindly or vote because somebody looks cool. And two, you know, even if he comes from the North, we got to understand that just because like somebody's liberal doesn't mean that he's not or that he's for black rights. Because yeah. there's there's a lot of white liberals who's just concerned about white politics. And yeah, you know, they might have black friends and seem cool. But when it gets real, are they really going to care about you? So because I think that we've seen the same story for decades of this cool white person. And we just going to vote for him because he likes hanging around black people. 
But I think that we have to be very careful. We have to ask questions, research, you know, his policies, all that stuff. And I at least like people like Killer Mike who's gone front and say, hey, you know that he voted the street or the three strikes bill and that he had like a hand in that in mass incarceration, which people don't know about. Joe Biden actually helped pass that bill. And I think that we get blinded because he was Obama's VP, but we don't know his history before that. So, And we we'll know see. how important our vote is, too. Exactly. And, you know, they play Biden ain't gonna be on the breakfast club. Like my dad, right, my right. dad cut Biden, Joe Biden here. Oh, you serious? Yeah, he came wow. to my dad barbershop. But wow, you know that can be. Oh, uh, let me get him. Let me get around these black people. Mm -hmm. Let me show him I'm cool. You but know that's, that's and that's yeah. that's our thing. Yeah. Like if we that's if they, if you see. show us well, you cool or you got to type a little bit he of he a cool white boy. We are gonna vote for him. It's, that's what I'm saying. Like we got we get just fall for for the okie dog every single time. We get past and and it's crazy too because like what you said and I remember um, even on Maynard Jackson on his documentary it's awesome on Netflix. But how white politicians the people who he was running against they would try to go to black barbershops or black churches and not even talk about black politics or what they were gonna do for the black community but just show face and then we'll be like oh he's cool because he came to see us. Mm -hmm. So we gotta demand more because white people just because you come to a a white barbershop or a white community, they aren't going to vote for a black person. So I think that we have to be harder and we have to ask more questions. And um, just a little snippet of it, because I just want you to see what kind of was outlined in the Mueller report. Um, you could go to the table of contents and if you just want to see how what they did. Let's so um, in the executive summary to volume one, this is what it says. It says there was a Russian social media campaign. The, uh, the Internet Research Agency, which is the IRA, carried out the earliest Russian interference operation identified by the investigation. A social media campaign designed to provoke and amplify political and social discord in the United States. The IRA was based in St. Petersburg, Petersburg, Russia, and received funding from the Russian oligarch. I don't even know how to say that name. It starts with a Y, and <laughs> his last name starts with a P. And the companies he controlled. He is widely reported to have ties to Russian President Vladimir Putin, and the other names are redacted because of an ongoing matter. So the Trump campaign is also under investi investigation by the House um, Judiciary Committee and the um, Finance Committee, and he has, an, there's like 20-something more investigations, and there's one in the Southern District of New York, a criminal investigation, which he they can't bring them in for criminal investigation until he's no longer the president, which is why he's definitely <laughs> got his life in the line for this 2020 campaign. So back to this. In mid-2014, the IRA sent employees on an intelligence gathering mission with instructions, and you can't say that's another part of the redaction. The IRA later used social media accounts to interest groups to sow discord in the United States Political, political system through what it termed information warfare. Mm. Remember that word, because we talked about that mm -hmm. before, but that's what the new thing is. The campaign evolved from a generalized program designed in 2014 and 2015 to undermine the U.S. electoral system to a targeted operation that by early 2016 favored candidate Trump and disparaged candidate Clinton. Mm. The IRA's operation also included the purchase of political advertisements on social media in the names of U.S. persons and entities. You hear that? Mm, wow. We talked about that before, wow. but just this is what Mueller found out for sure. I'm going to say that one again. The IRA's operation included the purchase of political advertisement on social media in the name of U.S. persons and entities, as well as staging of political rallies inside the United States. The investigation did not identify evidence that any U.S. persons conspired or coordinated with the IRA. Section two of this report details the office's investigation of the Russia social media campaign. So it goes into further detail. So that, to me, is what us as social media users should pay more attention to mm -hmm. because you see it's a person yeah. or it's, it's the Black Lives Matter of blah, blah, blah. Those mm -hmm. were some of the ones that the names that they used to sow discord. Wow. And they even staged rallies. So <laughs> you scary. know, oh, Black Lives Matter rally downtown such and such, and you don't know that it was really coordinated by Russian bots. It was fake. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it well, was, it was not, real. It was fake, but it was but what, basically started by what something. what they know is right. that Americans are very emotional. Just like we what we were talking are, about earlier. We are so quick to react yep. that if you put some information out there. Hey, meet us over here at this and we're going to meet up. Wow. And so something about us wow. is, is, is gave them 
That's the scary. ammunition yeah. that they know that we are very easily reactionary. influenced and reactionary. So, Kim, quick question. Let's say that these bots, which they have done, which is said in the report, that they can go on Twitter, Instagram, and say, hey, we're going to meet up over here at Atlantic Station. You know, we'll have a protest. So somebody like City, who's a real activist, he'll get people involved, yada, yada, yada. But could they also be working with the police department to get these people arrested, possibly Absolutely. harmed and killed? Yeah, that's wow. what I'm thinking. They, yeah. they gather all these people. They can shoot, make a, have a mass killing. And then you know, they could plant somebody in yeah. the protest to, to actually do something violent. And then they can say, hey, Black Lives Matter or whoever is, and, a, you know, and a that crazy goes, group. That goes back to my point. I think yeah. I said it last week. Like, we keep using these public forums, forums mm -hmm. to yeah. announce what we're going to do. Exactly. Like, we, we don't have to it's go on dangerous. social media to say, oh, we about to boycott this. Let, we need to figure out a different route. Right. Because... If they use, if they able to do that, if it's that easy for them to just buy an advertisement <laughs> and put up a post like, "Oh, yeah. we gonna be here," yeah, that just show you right there, like how ineffective, ineffective that is. That's scary too. So, do you guys think it's still safe to protest now? Because now, knowing that well, we have they all have these different things, back. You, you know that they started investigating like Black Lives Matter and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. all the people that were involved. There in seals, how he ended up burned alive in his car, and they tried to say that he killed those himself. All activists that were yeah. that have been killed that were a part of. Um, protests in the past. Yeah, that's a very so scary thing. So they went from, so this is another part. At the same time, the IRA operation began to focus on supporting candidate Trump in early 2016. The Russian government employed a second form of interference, cyber intrusion. Wow. So they didn't only, they didn't just, you know, influence. Now they're mm -hmm. hacking you. Yeah. Now they're just taking over your account. Right. Um, and the release of hacked materials damaging to the Clinton campaign. The Russian intelligence services known as Main Intelligence Direct Directorate of the General Staff of the Russian Army carried out these operations. In March 2016, the GRU began hacking the email accounts of the Clinton campaign volunteers and employees, including campaign chairman John Podesta. In April 2016, they hacked into the computer networks of Democratic Congress, Campaign Committee, and the Democratic National Convention, the GRU. The GRU stole hundreds of thousands of documents from, so we know that, mm -hmm. that they did that. Because we started seeing all those emails that were getting hacked, and a lot of people got fired. And it just right. started a big mess, and it made Hillary Clinton's campaign look like whatever. Yeah. So then it, it starts to talk about WikiLeaks. And they really kind of redacted a lot of that part of it, because if you don't know, Julian Assange was arrested a couple of weeks ago. And so that is also a part of an ongoing investigation. In the past, Trump has said, oh, you know, I love WikiLeaks. I bet you do, because yeah. they were giving him some of the information that he needed. That's but crazy. then when they started giving out his information or it wasn't cool when anymore. they found out he was doing that, he didn't, it wasn't, they weren't cool anymore. Information is currency. Information so, is currency. Yeah. You sell it. Facebook, all that stuff. It's crazy. Facebook... Um, got in trouble again. Yeah, for, I saw that. For selling our information. I saw that. Actually using your information as currency with other people. And everybody's like, Advertisers oh my God. and all that stuff. Every time I, I talk about hot dogs on Facebook. It's a I real thing. A, a hot dog advertisement. It's a real thing. Oh my God. Osmosis, no. <laughs> my. You keep playing these games on Facebook. You keep doing all this stuff. You already know what you're doing. You just sign your life away because it says somewhere in the fine print that if you play this game or if you do X, Y, Z, you can... Instagram too. There's been plenty of times I would order something on Amazon or um, oh, no. order Amazon a hat or something, in cahoots and then you'll be scrolling. Instagram, Facebook is on, uh, Instagram is owned by Facebook. It's all but connected. I, think, I don't even think it's just Facebook because no, it's a whole bunch of them. No, no, because I'm saying like I can probably say something right now, and my phone will show me app, like just my yeah. phone will I pick see, it up. That's, yeah, yeah, Apple, yeah, yeah that's scary. Apple get in trouble for yeah, that for, for too? having for, the sound. For having this, yeah, yeah. Oh, with the FaceTime mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And two, it was with to me. somebody told me before that the they were talking or doing something, and a text message came from somebody, and I was like, "Yeah, that's spooky." That's scary. I understand why it happens to me because you know I online shop, right? And I'm sure Amazon or whoever like, the store I know what you is like. I'm buying from yeah. is one of the stores that Facebook is in cahoots with, right. Using my information. That's scary though. That's super scary because you don't That's even the get world privacy. That we live in. So it's when capitalism. you vote, y'all, and I'm putting it on mostly the millennials. Mm -hmm. When you vote, you have to make sure that the person that you vote for in your local elections is is computer literate. Yeah, and because has policies see, about this. 
we need po- yeah. we don't have policies in place and that's a re- another reason why yeah. because it doesn't say specifically you know we don't have the laws in place for internet we need to establish I th- something. but i think that's that's a thing too like i think the internet took off so fast that it you just can't was control like, it <laughs> you know people weren't ready for it <laughs> yeah and we kind of we we just behind on internet and it's just yeah. continuing to grow and we just yeah. we chasing it yeah we chasing it in it you know that's real. Every time they find something, they, like 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 you got to think about it. They have made improvements because when it first started, we were all you know still in the music. Now they got more control over the music, but it's always gonna be something like this. Internet is way ahead of us. Yep, it's 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 crazy. That's and real. And when when Facebook and all those guys get brought up to the table and they have to testify and they have to hold themselves accountable for the things that they're doing with our stuff, they're up there like, yeah, we'll get it to you whenever we get it to you. <laughs> right. And nobody's doing a damn thing about it because they haven't put the right laws in place. Who can stop it? And they know that. And they know that. Be careful yep. and don't be so easily influenced. It's hard yep. for it's it's hard for me to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Because I see so many older people that are easily influenced by the internet. Yeah. And it's everybody hard is. to tell your kid, put your phone down, go outside and play. If you're already on the phone. You're being a hypocrite. I don't know what to say. And I think too, people have to challenge themselves and put down your phone more or not spend so much time on your phone because I think too, you become more uh, susceptible when it comes to the advertisements or giving out personal information and stuff. But it's scary because even if you aren't on social media a lot, the last thing that you've ordered on, on Amazon or Fashion Nova or anything for all the people out there, it could pop now, up. But now that on your you timeline. know that and you know why, yeah. it, you know how to move kind of, you know how to maneuver. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you to avoid. You kind of have to be careful mm-hmm. and know how to maneuver and know what is going on on social media right. and why you're seeing right. what you're seeing. Right. It's a scary because thing. Because it's studying your patterns. Yeah. What page you go to the most, the things you like. He likes sneakers, to, so we're going to show yeah. a sneaker page, and he's going to scroll past that, or he likes this, or, or she likes that dress, so we're going to keep showing it. Bathing suits, all that they stuff. They do that so. to me all the time. I'll mm-hmm. click on something, honey, and I'll be like, girl, you can't afford that. Close that out. Nah. Everywhere I go. And they want to get goes. you. It's on sale. You didn't And you're just going to keep snatch seeing it, it yep, before back. it's gone. You didn't snatch this up. Man. It's about to go. Somebody else bought it. It's going on sale. Yep. I'm like, that's wow. It. You have to have a strong mind these days. Kim, capitalism has no limit. And that's what people have to understand. Like advertisers, they can do whatever that they pretty much want to do. Like the NBA right now, on every player's jerseys, they have a brand's logo now. Yeah. So you can't even have a a jersey to yourself. Like a brand has to be on even a jersey because it's always advertisement going on 24-7. And and, uh, I mean, it started off as just Nike. Now you got... The, the local grocery store Motorola yeah, on there like, yeah that's crazy yeah um on a basketball jersey I've never seen that before except for you know Euro League or, or something like that but not in the American NBA where you have logos no no they said that they were going to start doing yeah, that they just I think they started it last year yeah it's crazy so speaking of which and influence and etc etc um there was a poll, and it said um, the U.S. Is, has become less the less less safe for journalists. That's scary. One of the least safe places for journalists, I should say. And because of all that we just mentioned pro- in the previous yeah. conversation, yeah, it affects because. It. Facts interrupt fantasy. Mm, that's real. And people don't want their fantasy interrupted. <laughs> Even when they know it's fake. Even yeah. when they know it's fake. Yeah. Because there's a world that's fake yeah. called social media and the <laughs> internet. America too. That people have started to live through. Yep. And when there's a journalist that comes along and really wants to see if this fake world is real, mm-hmm. and they may have their facts interrupt a fantasy, mm-hmm. people get mad. Yep. And for you, mm-hmm. that is getting your degree in journalism, mm-hmm. you know, how does that make you feel? Because this is a field that you want to get into because mm-hmm. why did you pick this field? Because you want to shed light on things. Yeah. And because you like to express yourself. And tell stories. And tell stories, mm-hmm. real stories. Yeah, yeah, not make believe things or. You and know, you want to like bring some information to people. Yeah. That's 
your right. Yeah, it is. And it's your First Amendment right. Exactly. And it's all everybody's. Of our right. Yeah, it's, it's it's everybody's right. But they want to threaten your life because you want to yeah. tell the truth. But honestly speaking, I think that America has always been unsafe for real journalists. And if you guys don't remember, I think his name is uh, Gary Webb. He actually exposed how the this government planted cocaine and, and black communities, all that stuff. And he was found dead. And this was like in 2002. Um, I, re I remember during the civil rights movement, Martin Luther King mm -hmm. was one of the people that understood the power of journalists yes, back then, mm -hmm. the power of pictures. Right. Because right. even though people were hearing about what was going on in the South, but you got to see it until they started seeing the dogs on TV, until they yeah. started seeing the people getting um, hosed down, right? Until they started seeing the, the, the police with batons. Yeah. You didn't, they didn't believe the, them. Yeah. They didn't believe that that was really happening in the South. Mm -hmm. We have to protect journalists. Yeah, it's a big I thing. feel like we should protect journalists. I don't even really think, like, nowadays, honestly, we like, everybody are journalists. I was just about to Word. say that. Because All of us think, sitting like, in this room. Even to the point to where, because I've been seeing it now, mm -hmm. you know, recipes, Nipsey, we always go keep bringing up Nipsey, yeah. but, like, the Nipsey's, and now they're saying Nick, uh, Nick Cannon, he went to go see Dr. Sabi's wife, mm -hmm. and... Like he's about to make, you know, he's doing that documentary, so he's gonna be considered a journalist. But Doctor Sabi's wife is always out talking. Him, her, and her, and his daughter, they go out and they do interviews all the time, and they tell everyone what Doctor Sabi's mission is and the fact that they think that he was murdered. Yes, right. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like anybody that's speaking the truth, somewhere. speaking the truth, yeah. especially in the black community. Mm -hmm. Anybody that's speaking the truth, like we just mentioned, the guy from uh, the Black Lives Matter. Yeah, he got killed. You know, Darren the Seals. Yeah, yeah, so. It's like, man, anybody that's really speaking about, especially getting better, and you mm -hmm. know, it seems like they die, they get killed. People and that's been happening for a long time. Sort of journalists, in a sense. Yeah, and and again, I think people get this like misconception somewhat that a journalist is just somebody that's writing articles and doing feature stories, which is cool. I do that, of course. But at the same time, Jay Black, like you're a journalist, like you have your camera, your mic, Kim, you're always speaking, reading things. So I think that everybody has to understand that we're all journalists and that we all have that First Amendment right. Mm -hmm. But for a very long time, our people, anytime that we even spoke about something, like you're done. Because they don't want you to say, they want you to get your ass beat. Play and along. Say, and not say Play along in the you. game. Yeah. But, and it's crazy too on Netflix. Netflix has been like in their bag lately. But uh, the Black Panther documentary, or on the Black Panthers rather, that is really, really good. If you the guys PBS ever get a chance. One? Yes. Yeah, it was dope. Yeah, it was did. dope. It was good. And um, Hoover, bro, he was something. Like he yeah. said that he would do anything to stop the rise of a black messiah. And he said that we can't have anybody speaking on us, any of that. In the moment, Fred Hampton, and I think people that they forget about oh, this, was is, only 20. That is revolutionary. Only day. 20 years old. You know how there's like... Um, a bag in every category. Yeah. That's my revolutionary bag. Yep. At Fred 20. Hampton. At 20. And just because he was oh, doing no, speeches. Oh, 20. <laughs> we'll oh, talk about that later. Yeah. Keep that. Remember that. Oh, yeah, because we talk about Don't tell them. Right. That. Hey, that's a good remember argument. Remember Fred Hampton <laughs> was 20 years old. When, when he was murdered. Mm -hmm. So and if you don't know who Fred Hampton you. is, we ain't got time. Google him. Right. He was active. They said. And remember he was 20. Yeah. And Kim, how about this? To go even and remember deeper. remember MLK was 39 yeah. or 38 when he was assassinated. And Pac was 25 when he died. Remember all that. So, we'll talk about what we talk about later, y'all. Okay. And Kim, to mm -hmm. make your argument even stronger, they said Fred Hampton, he was a force in the party since the age of 16. So the fact that he was so dangerous that they had to come inside of his house mafia style and blow down the house, shoot him, kill him in front of his, his wife who was pregnant at the time. So I think that that's what kind of scares us too when it comes to us speaking out, being vocal, because we know that every prolific black leader or most have been assassinated. So, um, so the data that I found out, this was in an article in NPR. So the U.S. has dropped to number 48 out of 180 in the least safe places for journalists. 48? So who's number who one? I was about to say, who's number yeah. one? Yeah. Let me see. Sheesh. I, I guess what constitutes being unsafe. Because, <laughs> man, no people with advice. I'm talking about they be in the middle of the war. Word. <laughs> I'm like, bro, y'all can't pay me enough for that. They be in Israel. But that's that content, like, you know, that's that compelling content. I'll do it on satellite, bro. We can do it. Reporters Without Borders dropped the U.S. to number number 48 out of 180 on its annual World Press Freedom Index. 
three notches lower than its place last year. The move downwards the country from satisfactory place work freely to a problematic one for journalists. Never before have US journalists been subject to so many death threats and turned so often to private security firms for protection. 10 journalists have been physically attacked this year mm -hmm. and 46 have been physically attacked since 2017. In January, one reporter was punched in the face and got her phone stolen while interviewing voters in California. Wow. Now, we do and that you, all the time. And you got to think about this, too. It makes sense that we're becoming the most dangerous place because... The, 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 the rhetoric, the no, Trump rhetoric. Because, I about to say, yeah, the so-called leader of the United States is against certain, you know... That's a good it, argument. Some yeah. of them people can be lashing out because Trump don't like them. Yeah. You know? That's real. That's real. Because I don't see how it's changed that much. Because mm -hmm. I think that, again, for people for centuries in America, if you were speaking facts, you would most likely end up dead. So, I don't know. I think it's kind of stayed the same. And here in Atlanta, the um, Atlanta Daily World, that was one of the first black newspapers um, in the country. And they always face ridicule or attacks and you know things like that. So again, I think from a black person's perspective, I think that it's always been the same for us. It's just I think now white journalists are are facing ridicule and and harm. But I think black journalists like forever. Black have, journalists. Yeah, I don't see how it's black, different. I think one of the first black. I'll get, I, I might be wrong, but mm -hmm. I, I swore I read this somewhere. Um, TV reporters on a national or mm -hmm. not national but like on the news that the local newscaster mm -hmm. one of the first black ones was on here in atlanta and they were trying to get him fired wow and he's a black journalist so i think that again we've always had that issue so the um reporters without borders index eva evaluates the state of journalism in 180 countries and territories every year and it shows an intense climate of fear has been triggered. One that is prejudicial to a safe reporting environment. So out of all 180 countries that they looked into, mm -hmm. only 8% are considered good. Wow. Venezuela is 148. Yeah, I was about to say, I thought you was gonna say 100%. <laughs> Russia is 149. And those are apparently our best friends. So we right. getting stuff from them. Vietnam, 176. Wow. Eritrea, where Nipsey Russell is from, is 178. <laughs> hey, Farrakhan, he said the same thing well, during the funeral. He's from there. He His said dad Nipsey is Russell. from there. <laughs> That's what but Farrakhan said Russell. during the funeral, too. Yeah, Farrakhan, so, he said that. I feel so bad because I was, I was like, why is he saying that? Oh, uh, when uh, Farrakhan was saying it? Yeah. <laughs> he said it like Nipsey five times. Nipsey Hussle is um, where his dad was from. Is 178th. Um, Turmekistan is 180th. Turmekistan. North Korea went up one. It's 179th. So you know <laughs> North Korea, they... Um, yeah, that's wild. They restrict everything on yeah. their television. Yeah. It's, it's the government... Mm -hmm. They control everything. They have to like sing the president a song every day. Yeah. So yeah, who is number one? That should wow. be like Switzerland or something. Let me see. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, the Euro European the European Union are the good ones. Yeah. I cannot believe. Africa, they're in the hundreds, too. Okay. The countries of Af Ethiopia is in the 110. Um, Eastern Europe, they're struggling, too. The Asian Pacific, they're struggling. This is crazy. Yeah, you just got to be careful. Got to be careful. I just don't understand... What it is that makes people not want the truth to be told? Like what you said, with the the, the lies sometimes. Yeah, like you don't want that to be screwed power. up. Empower, empower. Information is powerful. So if power. you start power shift. Yeah, you start speaking facts, and the people could rebel and go against you, and it changes everything. Yeah, it's it's all a battle. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. We have to be careful. Yep. We all have to be careful. Mm -hmm. 
So you think what? They should have they should have their own army. Who? Journalists. You got to fund it. You got to. <laughs> I just think that you got to build the right connections with the right people and have protection. That's the only thing. Like if, if you are going to say things against the government, if you are going to critique the government, you got to have protection from outside the government, even if that's illegal. So- where okay so that was my argument Mm -hmm. i understand that we have a lot of movements and a Mm -hmm. lot of armies Mm -hmm. but what are we doing with them yeah i mean because too even when i saw um the nation of islam in cali when i saw him you know with nip which was a beautiful thing my only critique and i love the work that they're doing is can they do this on a regular basis and and I know that they sell the bean pies, all that stuff, but just like how, I know it's funny, but just like how they had their whole army for, for that city march. Well, they got the, the gang members to get together, and Wh- they do a lot which of Which they have done before. In each city, and they mm-hmm. offer a, a sense of family. And they do a lot. And they, they do, do a, lot. a lot. And they are very, they give young men that may not have any other way to learn discipline. Yeah. They That's facts. That. That's big facts. And that's why a lot of them, when, you know, join when they're in jail. Mm -hmm. Because it's like they have that sense of family. Right, right. Belonging. Yes. And a lot of it, I mean, it works. Big time. I would just like to see the same energy or possible programs to, or tangible things to help prevent more deaths like NIP or more gang violence. So just like how they were marching I would you like know, to see I them always in the say streets. That, but and this is why I like Marianne Williamson, and I know she's not going to win, and mm-hmm. I know no one cares about her, but I like she's her cool. because she speaks the real, real truth, mm-hmm. and it's all—it's below the surface. It's mm-hmm. not a physical battle; it's a spiritual battle. Mm-hmm. And until this country comes to the place where they right their wrongs, yeah. And that's why she's for reparations because, Mm -hmm. you know, all this apologizing and I see more and more countries starting to apologize Mm -hmm. until you actually do something about it and just actually work toward getting out all the anger and the pain and the, you know? Yeah, yeah. Then it's just going to keep going back and forth. It's like putting a Band-Aid on a dam. Yeah, we still have the same issues, but I think that that's the closest organization that provides a possible army is the Nation of Islam. But still, you have to have weapons, all that stuff, of course, but... I think that that's the closest thing that we possibly have. Um, what else did you guys want to talk about? What's on the list? Morehouse? Yes. Morehouse, yeah. right down the street. Yeah, literally right down the street from here. So Morehouse has started to accept transgender men. Yeah. Yep. And a lot of people... Really don't care. I care less too. I don't. I think if if someone has already gone through the transition process, it is what it is. And two, even if you don't feel comfortable with it, you know, at the school, I don't think that that person is going to affect your life. You can just mind your business, <laughs> go to <laughs> class, and keep doing what you're doing. And, and it's that so. And right. that's what just infuriates me. You don't have to agree with the lifestyle. You don't have to agree with somebody's decision. But how does that affect you directly? That person's not going to rape you. They aren't going to try to touch you. So, and even if they do, you can defend yourself. So, I don't see... And Morehouse has has a lot of gay men. Morehouse is known for that. Morehouse really? has a lot of gay... What? <laughs> go to Morehouse. Go on campus. You'll see in about 2.5 seconds. So, if you can deal with gay men that you're rooming with, and they have the smallest dorm rooms in the world. So, if y'all are side by side in twin beds and you can room with a gay man or you can coexist with somebody who's outwardly gay, then I'm pretty sure you can coexist with somebody who's transgender. And I don't see how that affects you, but. Yep, they, um, Morehouse College will start accepting transgender men starting in 2020. My thing with it was, um, just me personally, Ooh. You don't really, I don't really hear about oh, okay. a lot of transgender men, nice. like yeah. women turning into men. I, right. I just hear the other way around. And you said it on Thursday. I yeah, remember I, I don't really, because yeah. at first I was thinking about Bruce Jenner, but he yeah. turned into a woman. Yeah, exactly. Like exactly. What, what what man has turned, or what woman has turned into the a woman? The one that had a baby, the first, remember yeah, the remember first was, man was on Oprah, baby? Or he was on Oprah. I was talking about that. Yeah. Um, but it's not Sonny as and common. Cher's daughter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I told them that. And they didn't know who Sonny and Cher were. 
Hey, we did get it right. She's do you a know who Sunny? Is, do you know who Sunny and Cher is? Yeah. Do you yeah. know who her Sunny is? No. <laughs> Sunny was her husband. Us millennials, you know, we know a little bit. Sunny you know is her husband, right. and they had a baby girl, and she is a man now. Yeah. Yeah. Again, that's somebody else's choice. And I think us in the black community, we just got to fall back on that, especially, you know, when it comes to Morehouse, because it doesn't affect anybody. Like, but I get it, too, with some people who feel like it could affect the school or affect his, his I reputation. Think, I think a lot of people... Their problem, especially with Morehouse being a black college, right? Uh, all male college, black men. It's just the 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 the, the toxic masculinity. Say it. No, it's Say not. it. It's the uh, and that's a dangerous the, term. The too, of we got black stop man, like around. man. It's just like man. Uh. It's like they've been trying to push us to you know be less of a man, right? And it's like now effeminate it's and things like that. And it's like man, it's really killing the black man, the black because they don't have no uh, you don't hear this coming out of no white schools. Yeah. It's at a black school that this story comes out. Yeah. Why couldn't they just do it and then just do it? That's what I said. You know? Why not just do it in quiet? It, but but it's, like, what is it? What's the word I'm looking for? Emasculate the okay. black male? Yeah, yeah. And, and also that's a very real thing. Hoover, he even talked about that, that that was going to be like a 40-year process. Yeah, see, people, but they got to read yeah, up on the FBI. That. Yeah, I read about that. That was in the, um, uh, what's Don't the they have called? a Hoover building around here somewhere? What's the, uh, the Willie Lynch one in the Willie Lynch? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Same thing, too. Buck breaking all that stuff. And Hoover said that this would be like a 40-year process. Oh, man. Yeah. But, Jay Black, to your point, that could be part of the situation, and, and I feel it. I just think that for the students there, the parents, you really can't change it possibly. So just try to make the most out of the situation. But, two, I was a little confused as well because Morehouse, they're a private school, so you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do. So I think that they're trying to get more money, trying to get more no, inclusive. I, no, I think it's a business move. Yeah. Like I say, I'm not mad at anybody that chooses Right, that. right. But it's just like when they when, like I know the, I know the news how they control narratives. Mm -hmm. So once they start talking about an all black male school, this is gonna be the first one they go to. Yep. You're saying it's a bunch of gay guys mm -hmm. there, a bunch of trans. It's gonna be a yep. bunch of transgender men there. It's like yeah. it's gonna be that example of what a black man is in America. And right. I don't like that. You yeah. Feel me? I yeah. just don't like. You feel I me? Mean, we gotta be represented like, like, just like that. Like, yeah, just like I, what I hear you saying is, just like you know, I get it, gay rights or whatever. What about heterosexual rights? Like the black we, man don't get nothing, we, right? We, we right. Black right. man, like you we get stepped on, we yeah. Just, everything like it's homophobic, nothing. It's yeah. Nothing. Everything, you know, yeah. we we don't get no credit for nothing. Like yeah. we just we really the strongest people in this whole in everything. Like yeah. all races, yeah, all genders, everything. Like yeah. but and we gotta accept everything. Yeah, we have to accept everything. And everybody, we know but how feel. what you mean? Because Jay Black, like he's very accepting and progressive. I, I get it. So you trying to say that we're toxic? No, no. I'm saying that that's what you saying that means to people. Like that's where that when people say toxic masculinity, that's what they're talking about. They're talking about. Like the which is that, black men, the right? They talking about straight black, <laughs> right? Men. Again, they, what just because do straight black men. Oh, have? and bro, Jay Black too. Um, it's a show called The Grapevine. Um, it comes. I'm on YouTube, and it's this like black panel. But one of the journalists on there, a black journalist, he wrote an article, and it got millions of hits. But talking about Nipsey died because he was practicing toxic yeah, masculinity. That's where, that's where that conversation so started all that last shit, week. all like, that, all that is extremely dangerous. Like we got to stop saying stuff like that. Like just because somebody is is strong within himself, confident, and and he doesn't fall for everything that everybody else falls for. We can't say, oh, he's too masculine. Because then at the same time, we have to accept everybody who's not masculine. So if you was, like I say, straight black men, we the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. We the bottom of the barrel. Like we always been the bottom bottom of the barrel. Yeah. In the eyes of the people anyway. In yeah. the eyes of the world. Like, yeah. Don't nobody care about a black male. Like yeah. honestly, no nobody care. Like even the closest people we got to care is probably the black woman. And that's but it. But y'all still shit on us. You feel me? It's like that's we the real. bottom of the bill. Hey, he's speaking we facts really, nah, though, kid. Like, we really the bottom. We, we love y'all. And oh, see, that's the problem. Y'all don't listen to us when we be trying to do vent. Y'all don't listen to us. Too. Yeah. And that's why I say y'all probably the black women gotta are gotta listen. the closest because y'all understand it. But I love us, but I believe a lot of y'all love y'all black male, gay male friends more. Wow. Wow. But you know, Sid, you're a very small percentage. Out of the pie. Why? What does she do? She's rare. Like, right. I don't like that. That's not cool. But that's a common thing, though. I don't like that. 
it's a common thing. I don't like that. And now I, I like think that. that's why so many black people probably feel threatened now with the whole transgender thing. Because again, I feel like black men probably feel like they're probably being stepped over again. We are. It's yeah. so crazy. Me and, my, me and my boy was just talking about it today. And uh, we was just basically talking about like, man, we don't really have nobody to, you know, I was talking about something and I'm like, mm -hmm. I just deal with my problems. I don't talk to nobody about them. And it's like, that's he, what I tell Sid. Thing, he was like, man, and I'm yeah, like, you have nobody to talk to. We got our mom, but I'm not about to run to my mom every time I got a problem. Yep. Like, you know, and it's just like, man, we don't have nobody I to talk to. I was just having that conversation. If we do, we, we looked at it soft. You're soft. Yeah, you're too emotional. It. I, it's like, what are we supposed to do? Bro. What are we supposed to do as black men, as straight black men? That's scary. If I was a gay black man and I came out. <laughs> you, you have 10 girlfriends. It'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. Talk to a female about good something. Now, but, but listen, but listen. That's crazy, isn't listen, it? it? That's cool now. But no, no, right. no, no, no. I'm saying it's why everything's good. Yeah, you can open up. But soon as some shit go bad, oh, you. She, she ain't gonna want to hear gonna it. Switch on you. She gonna switch. Like you feel me? Oh, yep. you was a bitch. You was crying and all that. <laughs> yeah, that's like, it. Damn, I, was open I can't up. be human. Yeah, I can't like, be it's human. Sad. It's sad. And it's scary too because black men have the highest suicide rate in the country, mm -hmm. and it's all for that reason. And um, you could just Google it. It's from like multiple sources. And it's been that way since like 2012. And um, I think um, as well, just like what you guys said, I'm going to tell Sid that all the time. Like most guys don't have a person who they can vent to because you don't want to vent to your friends all the time. So then if you're dating a girl, you probably can't do that either because she can use that as, as firepower. You probably did it once and then it backfired on you. And now it's like, well, who can I talk to? around with this macho thing all the time. Toxic like, masculinity. Yeah. Toxic masculinity because of that. Yeah. Yeah, so it's I think lose, that lose situation. and and honestly speaking, I think that the whole toxic masculinity thing is a direct result of not us, but know, everybody else the around 90s us. And honey, huh, you couldn't handle what life was like back then if you think the toxic masculinity sure, is sure, these dudes is, right now. Like yeah. Mm -hmm. Where do we stand up for y'all at? I mean, oh, I we don't saying, have the. I mean, just social media. It, and Izzy, that's a problem right there. We you, do. We, but we look, do. example A, a Izzy, he just said he just said how how he felt, but you couldn't actually believe him because it's like nah, and yeah, and, and that's the problem. Or, right, or he look, didn't finish I wouldn't even say I wouldn't even say <laughs> that y'all don't y'all yeah. don't defend us, but the 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 time y'all shitting on us is at the same level. Like you feel me? It just canceled out. Right. <laughs> so it's like shit. I didn't say defend the black man. I said defend masculinity. Mm. Yeah. Soft. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I don't necessarily feel. Yeah. Right. I feel you. Promote that more. Yeah. Promote but that I, more. I feel, but I feel like that's. I feel like even though I, I feel you with that, but mm -hmm. I feel like that's killing masculinity too because. As a man, I'm supposed to be gentle with a woman. I don't have to treat yeah, her like you supposed to be a gentleman. You feel me? Oh, yeah. Talk, That's making them more like the, the women is masculine. Like, yeah. Oh, nah, we gonna have <laughs> I'm going to shake your hand. <laughs> no, I'm supposed to be gentle with you. You're going to end up I'm dapping like, her up. We're doing business, so I'm not. I'm going I'm to shake it a little hard. But I ain't about to squeeze your hand like right. another man. The problem with that is it's too many right. men out here that's, that's a little... Yeah. Nah, but a woman know just because you shake your hair and soft don't mean that she think you you know I how shake to shake. you know how to shake a woman I shake hand. it soft to a woman. Yeah, you know how to shake a woman's hand. But but at the same some do some do some do like I rather be gentle with a woman though. Yo, energy gonna say something different. Yeah, exactly. Yo, energy energy, energy, say something different. Yo, energy, energy and confidence it speaks for itself. Yeah, some some women like it. Yeah, yeah. Some women don't think about it. Right. Some do. I'm saying for my me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I get the compliment. Yeah. I appreciate that. Back in the day, you know how everybody is like, I mean, everything you do, like, you can't touch. Please. Back in the day, you used to go to the club. Dudes would be smacking you on the butt. I seen seen Duval put a video up from the Daytona shit. It wasn't Freaknik, but whatever they used to have in Daytona. Yeah. But. It was it, um, it was literally two girls and a group of dudes and they all would just hit Take the girls. It wow. It was wow. crazy. Wow. It was crazy. Wow. Yeah. No, back in the wow. day, that's what I'm saying. These people would never survive. Mm. It was off the chain. Like, y'all don't understand. Like, Freaknik would have been... I don't even know if y'all really... It, it was crazy. What about the woman that likes that shit? Hmm. 
It's a lot of girls who do. That like what? Like what? Attention like that. They're all over the Attention. internet. What are you talking about? No, I'm saying like if that was to happen nowadays, the males would get bashed. Mm-hmm. Women, even though it, it, cause it's just a video clip that we're watching. As yeah, as yeah, as yeah. So we're going to bash all the men that was there. We're going to say that it's yeah. something that you can't do. It's right. Not, but I know multiple women that like that. watch porn that like gang bang scenes. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, that's, that's crazy. That's what they into. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm just saying, like, what yeah. happens to those women? Like, mm. what happens to that narrative? Right. And even, like, on the, I can't find, I think he deleted it, but on the comments, they were just saying, like, I think even a woman said, it's like, man, it's this is equivalent to girls in the club with their friends and they just smacking their ass because they weren't, like, grabbing her. Yeah, they were yeah. just smacking it. Yeah. It was like, it was like, yeah, this no, is equivalent. Yeah, no, they was tapping her or whatever. Yeah. I saw it. This equivalent to, you know, girls in the club with their friends. Yeah. Yeah. And the girls doing their friends doing the same thing. And two, I think, and this is where a lot of resentment comes from when it comes to black men and, and black women too, is that sometimes black women, they can do stuff like that, but still say, you know, I need to be respected or or I need a man who does X, Y, and Z. But then a guy, he he pretty much has to be perfect. But then with a the woman, sometimes she can make mistakes and she can pretty much say anything and demand to be treated in a certain manner. Or she could be finding that from anybody else and it's like with guys as well i think sometimes it's harder because it's hard trying to find the right woman and it, it's it's a lot of women out there who's who's doing that stuff who's getting attention from multiple guys or all that so i think that it's it's very hard for a black man to open up to people try to find that that right partner as well Auntie it's Kim. hard it sounds call good Auntie but, it, but that's Kim. why that's why you know i always be like I don't really care about none of this extra shit that's going on. Like, I don't yeah. care to complain about none of this yeah. shit. Like, what's the solution? That's why right. I'm always about solutions because right. at the end of the day, you I realize like change. people you like have to in general. Look, you, you got to think. And, and we, what can we do? But right. in general, you got to think about it. it. You got to think about it. Yeah, hey, we should, bro. That'll be actually pretty you dope, bro. We could do it you on the show. Yeah, we could do it on the show. But listen. You change the narrative in the way that you want things to be seen. Don't support things that don't make you look like the way you want to look on everything. And you, when you talk to the girls mm -hmm. that you talk to, not you because you can't meet mm -hmm. no more girls. <laughs> but when y'all talk to girls that y'all yeah. meet and you see that what they're into or whatever, yeah. you know, just be like, oh, you like that? Like, man, listen, I don't like just it keep because it blah, blah, blah. Nah, I ain't going to open her talk. mind up to I, some. Honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like, yeah. just like you say about, you know, giving the, I feel like energy, that energy stuff is real. Like, mm -hmm. you attract what you are. That's fact. I just feel like you got to start, we got to start within. I got to yep. change who I am. Yep. I can honestly say, like, I've been attracting, like, I attract quality women. Yeah. Because I feel like I, I put it to myself, you feel me? A quality person. Yeah, yeah. like, and it's just like you get what you attract. Mm -hmm. And whoever you don't attract, whatever, they going to fall off. They yeah. might You might attract them, but they're not going to stay around long. That's real. Yeah, I think that uh, I feel like we looking too much for what we think we don't want or what we don't want, you know, based. I think we should be, put it this way, I think we, we looking too much for what we say we want or what, we, you know, what mm -hmm. we think we want. When, mm -hmm. like, I feel like what, what Jay Black just said about the energies is, like, what's most important. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Whether or not a person did this or got this on their face or whatever. Like, that ain't what's most important. Like, yeah. I had somebody that was, like, quote, unquote, a perfect wife. You feel what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And that wasn't, obviously, that wasn't, that didn't get me going. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, she was bad. You know, mm -hmm. all of that. You know what I'm saying? So, I realized that it's more about personality. It's more about whether or not we even vibe. It's on the inside. Yeah. Yeah, like, it start with that. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. the attraction, of course, got to be there. Yeah. But besides all of that, like, what... Like, do we even get along? You know <laughs> right. Saying, like, can we hang out for like multiple yeah, hours? Like, and if we can yeah. Do that, like, without you irritating me, without me irritating <laughs> Being you. Being ready to go. Yeah, like, yeah. then that's where it starts. All the other stuff is just like, you know, that's a whole nother topic now. Like, that's real. Like, am I going to make you my wife? Are you going to mm. make my kid? That's a whole nother down the yeah. road. But like, can we at least like have Be the fine. right energies and like only fuck with people that keeps the right energy like you know mm, what I'm saying in yeah. your life like I mean like if somebody's irritating you only stop support dating people them. that yeah, that's keep real. the right energy only support people that's real. that reflect who you are only only support artists that reflect who you are only support actors who reflect who you are and mm -hmm. what you believe in only give your energy your money your Instagram likes follows clicks mm -hmm. to people who reflect who you are and what you stand for that's mm -hmm. what you do i mean totally act like those other people are not there mm -hmm. you don't have to follow everybody and listen to everybody's album just because they put one out yeah and you see how influential social media is everyone recognizes that now you have got to pay more attention to what you clicking on yeah don't support anybody or anything that does not 
represent you as a black man and what you want represented as a black man. That's yeah. the bottom line. That's how you nip it in the bud. Oh, they go such and such. He's doing this. And I'm not going to click on that because then his popularity his and views, stuff and his yeah. views are going to go up. And next thing you know, he's going to be all over TV because the advertisers know Boot that game. this person is yeah. popular. <laughs> People like you that. have yeah. got to ignore and yeah. everybody says the cutoff culture. You fucking right. <laughs> you fucking right. Because yeah. if you're not representing, and we got that you power. Have all this power. You right. have all this attention. You have all eyes on you. You better go out there and act like you know how to act, or else right. I'm cutting you off. Right. Because we know how influential the internet is. We right. see how other entities and how our enemies mm-hmm. are looking at it and getting influence and know how to. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I think too. Um, it it really starts at home. Like we have to start teaching our kids, our brothers, our sisters, how to treat black women and black women, how to treat black men. And that's how do you think we feel as women Yeah. with some sort of moral and ethical standards when y'all is so deeply into like city girls, Cardi B. Y'all no, 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 no. Hey, I'm be real. Most guys. Yeah. Most guys really don't like city girls. Like all the, all the black men I speak to hate the city girls because because, because there you go. (laughs) And then, and then two, I think if that if I was to come into any party, what, a lot of black see men a bunch don't, of black don't like women that. support city yes. girls. Women support Cardi How you B. Feel about it? Women support those. Do you women. feel like most black men support the city girls? Or yeah, I was, even though Lil Yachty wrote it, I don't it, like the city girls even at all. Yachty wrote it. Yeah, but you know. Women, oh right, he did come the out city, and say that. The city girls fan base are not men. But yeah, listen, but listen, Mega Stallion too. If you, to Mega be Sta- real with you, like most of the time, yeah, when, it's, when, it's those, when it's those songs, when the girl is talking about doing whatever she going to do, it, a man wrote it. Right. Even from back in the day. But that's part of the music industry, which goes higher than just us. It's the people that run that who tell them this is what's popular, and then you can get paid off of this. You got the power to shut everything down. You got the power to not give anybody any credit. Do you have them on your playlist? Who? You. City Girls? Whoever. Whoever is not representing a healthy nah, black I listen, whatever. Nah, I listen to what I want to listen to. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, yeah. I'm asking you, do you have anybody on there like that? But nah. but even if even if we don't support it, that doesn't mean that it's still not going to be successful. I'm saying you got to start from somewhere. True. And make it not cool. Make it not popular. When you see the shit on TV, turn it off. Why is that? Yeah, I mean, I don't, like I say, I don't. Like I direct my energy, I mean, to certain right, things. Right. Like I listen to certain music. You guys, yeah. I okay, barely watch know, TV. I, if I watch I TV, band, I'm going to pick what I'm watching. Like I yeah. always I drop just, my band on millennials for y'all, cause y'all are. I get it, cause y'all are cool. Y'all and I'm not cool. saying that I'm perfect. I do. I fuck up too. I ain't saying that I, I don't fuck up, but uh, you still human. I do is right, but yeah, you still human. I try my best to be able to take control of my own life. Yeah. At the end of the day. Yeah. Um. So on to more fun things to talk about. Well, not fun, but we'll mention one more thing before we get to fun. So last week, too, another thing that happened was that the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris burnt down. They got, like, billions of dollars in funding. Everybody knew. Nobody knew why. And then um, it sparked a social media frenzy because everybody was like, what about the black churches in Louisiana? The black churches in Louisiana have since gotten, I think, I want to say $3 million. Yeah. For to um to help rebuild, so yep. bringing awareness to that helped them to get some money to help rebuild the church, the black churches in Louisiana. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw Reconstruction yet that I've been telling you to watch on PBS. Yeah, I'm trying to get to but, it. Put it in um, group. I keep forgetting. Hey, Burning, my dad said it was fire. You saw, saw it? it? No, I said put it in a group. I keep forgetting. I want to yeah. watch it. I'll, I'll, yeah, same I'll here. You. But um, burning black churches is as American as apple pie. I'll just put it like that. Yep. Um, black churches historically have been <laughs> places where people met and had the conversations that you mentioned before that we keep having in public and you keep getting mad because we're like, why are you doing this? Journalists, they used to meet um, up there at black churches. Historically, yep. black churches were the places where those meetings <laughs> and those social gatherings right. took place. Right. Um, specifically, the church where the um, Charleston massacre took place oh, yeah, yeah. was burned down during a David slave Walker. revolt. Right. And it was rebuilt. So look it up, Google it, do your research. But burning black churches was one of the (laughs) um, tactics used by white supremacists during the Reconstruction to try to intimidate black people. Wow. Wow. Yep. Um, Also, last week, what else happened? Y'all do not be helping me out when I be trying um, to remember what we're talking um, about. 
you have put up a, a post on the CTD page about the uh, the black church the black church freeing people with minor crimes. Oh yeah, and new I, birth, right? Okay, new birth, what... new birth. Oh, and if you yeah. guys watch Ti's Family Hustle on um, tomorrow, well, on Monday or whenever, the, everything on VH1 is the same show. They got on Mondays. Shows. Yeah, they turn the whole thing <laughs> on every day. But Pastor Jamal Bryant was also at the meeting I was at with Ti when we yeah, discussed the, the Gucci boycott. Mm-hmm. Um, so he is definitely somebody that we should follow. I want to go to his church one day, but it's kind of far from my house. Yeah. But now my thing about bringing that up, somebody, when I, I put it on the story, mm-hmm. on the Innovative Black Story, and somebody wrote me a message like, nah, this is real. My brother getting out on Sunday. Wow. wow. Yeah, that's so, crazy. Well, that's amazing, man. You, and also follow our page, ctd underscore ATL on And that's Instagram. what I'm talking about, bro. Um, yeah, like churches finally doing birth, what they could have been doing new forever. Is, right. New, <laughs> is, new yep. Birth Baptist Church is pastored by Jamal Bryant. And um, it was, it used to be, um, pastored Eddie by Eddie Long, yeah. may his soul rest in peace. Um, there was lots of controversy around the church, which is now this, the new pastor. Anyway, their new birth bails out nonviolent offenders um, for a fresh start. New Birth Missionary Baptist Church has raised $120,000 to provide bail for the first time nonviolent offenders in four Georgia counties. The bailout program was designed to give men and women a second chance beginning Easter weekend. Pastor Jamal Bryant will share details of the initiative during a press conference, and that was um, yesterday at New Birth. So shout out to Pastor Jamal Bryant and a lot of churches in Atlanta that do God's work and help out the community. And not just in Atlanta. I'm sure that there's churches everywhere. Churches get a bad rap. I don't know when that started happening, and I'm going to need black people to stop helping out the white supremacist agenda and, and dogging out black churches, because <laughs> there are some very good black churches that do a lot for the community. Shout out to my old church mm-hmm. in um, Houston, Windsor Village, because when I lost my job, they paid my rent. That's what's up. I don't know what church y'all been going to. I love to, it. But, uh, hey, Kim, I just think, I think that most people's... Not animosity, but I think most people are waking up. Hurt. I think people are church hurt. A lot of people are church hurt. Yeah. And a lot of people got their backs turned on them. And a lot of people have gone to places of worship that really aren't a reflection of the life of Christ. And, Fair. and so um, that's unfortunate. And I think people should get to know God for themselves. And I think yeah. that um, that's for Baptist people. Mm-hmm. I got a word for the Catholics. Right. That's a whole but different Catholics, discussion here. Yeah. Y'all raise a gazillion damn dollars to build a building. And I think the Catholics kind of feel like, um, and, and when, when we talk about Christians in, in, in politics, mm-hmm. and a lot of it is Catholicism, mm-hmm. and it's a different, and I don't want everybody to tie up Catholicism as the Christianity there are different denominations, and that one is very. It starts very from that, though. Yeah, that's the Roman Catholicism the and yeah. what Christians, because there are some Christian it denominations that are from Africa, and they are Easy. spiritually yeah. based, and they practice mm-hmm. African spirituality along with Christianity, mm-hmm. because Jesus was African and East, yeah, North African, yeah. Middle Eastern, um, and he did. He's a prophet. Anyway, long story short, my message to Catholics is mm-hmm. you cannot buy your way your yeah. way yeah. <laughs> yeah so I think that I think that they think that and I think that we should <laughs> we should concentrate more on what Jesus did and what his philosophies were and mm-hmm. try to get along with everybody and love everybody regardless of how much money they have and whatever yeah. because that's what Jesus would have done Facts. and he wouldn't try to buy his way or whatever I think two things with the church burning when I saw a lot of black people being sad about it. That kind of scared me because it's like black people just want. This to be is sad. the same I mean, institution pick anything to be that's sad. been around for eight hundred years plus that uh, enslaved Roman you Catholics and killed, called it Romans, and called it good business. Romans killed Jesus. Yeah, right, right. So don't forget. So that. yeah, so when you got Roman Catholic, but <laughs> and two, um, I think that most black people's animosity are not even that, but I think people are aware now and people understand, hey, if these churches are getting tax free money, but we got a church on every street corner, but our neighborhoods look the same, but the pastor, he has all this money. Not not your church, of course. Yeah, no, just but, church but, but most the churches people have. And, and then for, for for centuries and for so long, the church was used as an instrument to keep white supremacy going so at music, the same so time. Hip-hop. Right, right. So, so I think are that you mad that uh such and such has a Ferrari? So why are you mad yeah, at the pastor? That's because, what comes with his job. 
But at the same time, I think that people's frustration where it comes from is that our communities are still in the same predicament. And then, too, that we got these people that are struggling who, who, pay your, who pay their tithes every week. But this pastor, he's not empowering them to do something about it. Like, for instance, Jamal Bryant, I respect that. That's actually put in yeah. power in. Martin yeah. Luther King, that's actually put in power yeah. in. But most pastors are just there for the check. They'll hoop and holler all Sunday, get the money, and then that's pretty much it. Like, yeah, like there's no like excuse that, there that we have so many churches in so many black communities, but we're still in the same predicaments. And these churches make billions, billions collectively. The black church so makes billions on the week. So do a lot of week. other corporations because we live in a capitalist society. I feel society it, and but we have to demand we more. We have to demand more for we have everybody to. is my point. Yeah. It's including the churches. Yeah. Yeah, and and I think for a very Including long time. the musicians that say they, they up, don't want to influence everybody. No, I, I decided not to speak on what I was about to say. What? Nah, bro. Hey, say I'm it, bro. Because Izzy, we need you to chime in. Nah, no, say it. Don't be quiet like, now. I was gonna ask y'all, like, did y'all hear like them say like it was something about like how the mega churches wasn't allowed to like to do certain things because of their relationship. Yeah, they with aren't the allowed to have political, really like conversations because they're signed to a five hundred one c three. Yeah. They can't. And that goes to my point that that is a real tool because it's like that for a reason. Because they don't want for the pastors to stand out or, or you know, say anything. Because when we had pastors like David Walker in the 1800s, they tried to kill him. Or, you know, Martin Luther King, you know, they took him out. So I think that people get it's frustrated. A, it's the separation of church, church and state. state. Yeah, so I think people get frustrated too because so many times when something happens to us, the the black pastors are, are always saying you know we have to be about love or we have to be about this but if if something happens to you know somebody who's white it's it's like we got to get this person down or we have to take care of what we have to take care of so i think that black churches to a certain degree has made us very passive too so i think that that's been a a bad thing somewhat as well but overall you know for the people like kim church or uh, jamal bryant people that's actually doing work i respect it yeah um yeah that's all i have to say about that there's a new senate bill and i we didn't mention this but i just came across it um and it's causing an uproar about speaking about hbcus there is a senate bill sb 273 that would change the names of albany state fort valley state savannah state to a uniform name under a new system separate from the university of georgia system so would they have to change their names they're going to change, they could keep the name, but the funding would be coming from a different place. Mm. So they're going to go to Senate and argue this and say that it's not cool soon. Um, the historically, black colleges and universities are in a state of emergency, is what they're saying. Yeah, I mean, it's been like that for a very long time. Uh, Morehouse, too. Like, Morehouse needs money. Like, I think Howard and Hampton are probably the only two that's chilling. But other than that. And that's, I think, if I, is it Howard or one of them? Mm -hmm. I think it's Howard. Mm -hmm. But they always, I know, like, Diddy got, like, an honorary degree. Yeah, Howard. So they probably getting a lot of money right, donated right, to them. Right. So that'd be the thing about them schools. Like, the reason that the the, the, the schools are nice is because the alumni are don donating. Yeah. Ohio State called me all the time, asking me for money. I'm like, I don't have it. Mm -hmm. And they just keep asking, like, public. Okay, though. well, if and you can public. just give us this, right? <laughs> the parts right. that are concerning, um, the parts of the bill that are concerning, um, is that they're taking the university from that system, setting up another university system to cover just HBCUs, which would very much take them out of a larger pool, putting them into a smaller pool where the finances would not be able to be as flexible as they are now. So. An already struggling HBCU system would have would be struggling even more in Georgia if, if that were to take place. So they're meeting and discussing that. I got a question for y'all. What if uh, I got this idea from somebody I know, but uh, they working on something. But anyway, what if all the superstars that's black, like instead of going to white colleges, went to black colleges? I've been, yeah, and then, I've been saying that for years. Yeah, we did. Hold on, hold on, hold mm -hmm. on, hold on. And then yep. Jay and whoever else that need to stream it, whether it's Ice Cube and the Big Three, whoever need to get together Do it for to the make schools. sure that it's televised, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's on title, whether it's on whatever, you know what I'm saying? Jay, go take that idea, you know what I'm saying? And like- It's simple. 
It's it's really it really is <laughs> the fix the fix that's the fix for, I believe for the HBCUs. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I said the same thing. Number one talents and all of the all the African Americans. Yeah, go straight Every to the sport. school now. Way all the gyms gonna be you know all of that is gonna be ours. So that's how so we used to so be. then you have ticket sales. They gonna come. They gonna have to come. Yeah, the scouts are gonna have to come to the HBCU. Right. HBCU. You start getting ticket sales, it'll be sold out every game. That's all that how stuff. it used to but be. But you know, but I think that's how a lot when of we talked about. But I think when we talked about it at first, the reason why. But mm-hmm. the reason why, though, is first off, somebody got to take that jump. An athlete got to take that somebody, jump. Somebody, somebody has to have kahunas. But you got to transfer. Yeah. To, <laughs> but you got to. Howard or something. And you got to. That would be too. crazy. These bigger schools, they got bigger pockets, so they can pay these families off. Yeah. Uh, they can, they can give you 100000 these, these athletes coming from poor, from poverty. There you go. There you, you go. Feel me? Duke can give Zion 100000 go 100000 Send your son here. You yep. feel me? Hold up. Pick the game plan. So, look. You go to the one year school first mm-hmm. to get the popularity because if you don't never go to the what's the name, nobody even gonna know who you is. There so you go. You go to that joint first, transfer down, you know what I'm saying, to a lower what's but the, is I'm saying if you go to Duke, a lot of but a Duke, lot of athletes you know have saying? done that though. You go to the league, you Yeah. Know, that's the And you that's wasting time. That's, that's the point. But here's the thing though, I think that it just takes like what you know you said with somebody like Zion. Straight out of high school, instead of going straight to Duke, you can go to Howard, Morehouse, and then you can attract more people because it's like, dang, Zion, he did that. So then I can do it. And But I think that we don't understand our power sometimes. Like, you don't have to go to Duke. Oh, never, you don't. we never do. Zion, like, he was. Top athletes I know in Ohio, OJ Mayo. Yeah, OJ Mayo was nice. I used to this love OJ went Mayo. He to a Division four school. Yeah. So he went to a school and made that school bigger. Like, wow. made everybody come watch that school. Like, wow. Division four, like, you D1, D2. Yeah, bro, D3, that's not even Division there, bro. Four. He's not playing. His competition was terrible. Bro, that's like high school. Ball is love. Ball is life. Uh, if y'all watch Ball mm-hmm. is life, it, it, the tournament is nothing but the top um, high school students. All black. You know what I'm saying? So think about it. It's the same thing. It's the same concept. You put them all together, you're going to have a good league. You know yeah. What I mean? And, bro, here's the thing, too. Just like what you guys said, we already have our own streaming services. Like, you can put it on YouTube TV. You can put it on Tidal. You can That's put it on Apple problem. Music. Like, we have so well, many options. Beyonce and her... Um, That'd be like a whole experience, too. Beyonce is trying to... Resources. Like what Jay Black was saying, you got to have resources. Bad dorms. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I said. They got to be somebody. Got to take that. Somebody got to take that step. Yeah. Somebody got to be willing to take that step. Yeah. And you got to be the sacrifice. That's what I was talking about with the dorms. Yeah. With the dorms is bad. In Atlanta, you got yeah. no AC in Atlanta. It could. And look again. Build it though. Imagine how the. Imagine how my like my yeah. cousin. Yeah. Hey, Yeah, hey, that's real. That's I'm real. You got about, three roommates in one room. About, I'm not talking about the main regular people. If you're not an athlete, I'm not talking about you going to HBCU. Yeah. If you want to be a doctor and there's no HBCU. And hey, that's there, your choice. I'm not talking about yeah. that. I'm literally just talking about the high school uh, number one pick, draft pick. Because he could change the whole paradigm. He could change the paradigm. Yeah. Ten of them all go, like, let's say 2020, ten of them go. That'll change the game. game. That yeah. would instantly change the game. Yo. Yeah. Like, I don't know how they would deal with that, yo. Like, that would be. They would be pissed. They'll be trying to find violations and all that stuff. That because, be bro, think about this. Morehouse, they're. And they pay them. And pay them. And you getting paid. That's the thing. That's it the changes difference. everything. Oh, you still got to. NCAA. Gotta be, yeah, in the NCAA regulations. It ain't got to be the NCAA. Oh, yeah, because yeah, yeah, it falls yeah, underneath yeah, that. Yeah. But at the same time, if they start making that money, then they can start doing what Duke does, Louisville. I give you 50 k if yeah, you they, sign they, with they us. They throw it under the table. Well, yeah. Technically, you don't have to pay them the the, uh, the marketing brand like a uh, like a Rock Nation can pay them. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like so, uh, like a big baller brand. Was, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. at the end of the day, like they still get paid. That'll be know nice. Know yeah. Ain't gotta be a no deal. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I and. Don't know. And I think that that's what just frustrates me because we can do this overnight. It's just that somebody has to say, let's do it. And with, bro, Grambling State, Doug Williams, first black NFL quarterback to ever win a Super Bowl, he went to Grambling. And when he was at Grambling, they said that that's before, you know, integration, all that stuff, Mm. that Grambling was like Alabama. Like they had the top athletes used to go to Grambling State, Howard, Hampton. But what happened was when you started getting people like Alabama with Paul Bryant, he started getting black or the best black athletes from the HBCUs. And then now Alabama has all their resources, weight room, all that stuff. Why? Because they win. But how are they winning? 
from the black athlete. And at the same it starts time, with us. too, like, it's, I, the, the, you know, the athletics, that's, it's, it's good to fund that, but we got to mm-hmm. make sure it's funneling into the education. There too, you like, go. The there school. you go. Right. It will, whole experience. But, you know whole experience. You got to build the tree. Yeah. Let the tree, you know, build fruit. So it starts from the athlete, and then he can get education. Good, you know yeah. It could, yeah. but... But listen, but you telling, but you yeah, asking Jay Z yeah. to donate his money. He can be like, no, nah, I, I want to put it. <laughs> it's a risk. Yeah, yeah. I, I want. He said, I want my money to go to. He can. He can say, I want my money to go towards this though. Yeah. If I'm donating well, my money, I can say she 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 donated a whole bunch of money. No, I'm saying you these investors. Let's take Jay Z out of it. If these investors say I only want mine to go to sports. Oh, I see what you're saying. You yeah. So then you just gotta leave it in sports. Yeah. Yeah. Beyonce donated a hundred thousand dollars to HBCU. If the school is uh, in business with Jay. Yeah. The school, even if Jay decides to do whatever he wants, I'll, if I take a hundred thousand dollars and we make a million, mm-hmm. the Jay might make four hundred thousand. The school might make two hundred thousand, or whatever other investors make their money. The mm-hmm. school takes their two hundred thousand, even if Jay doesn't want to help out and put the money into the school. Mm-hmm. The school can put their their earnings towards it. The school. That's true. That is. Incentives. That's real. They be having loopholes. <laughs> That's real. It's going to sports. Money is money. It's yeah. not about it's the contract is the contract and whatever yeah. we decide to make the contract. It goes from there. That's our that's our deal. Yeah. So if if I have if I'm making money on, on and I and I want to do something because this is my business at the end of the day, this is the school. You know yeah. Yeah. The money that's being put. Yeah, towards the college of business from alumni. Because the businesses alumni. are investing yeah. into the people because they so, want them to so come it, work it's, for them. So it's towards that. It's towards that one particular it's thing. I got mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Honors College. How they have. It's separate. Mm-hmm. I see yeah, what you're that's saying. That's how Ohio State is. Yeah. 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 So it's separate schools and it's separate businesses. It's not income coming from a business. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. This is different. It's, ca- it's capitalism. We talk about that all yeah, day. Yeah, pure investment. It's business. If you're talking yeah. about grants and where your money can go, yes, they can dictate where your money goes. Yeah. But we're not talking about grants. We're yeah. talking about doing business. We're like pretty about- much here's some money. No, just we're straight talking up. about we want to do business. And yeah. you can't use my name without, you know, mm-hmm. you can't, there's no airing anything on title without the school's logo. Without, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's, 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 a, that's a problem right there because he's going to be like, all right, fuck it. I'm not doing it. So y'all yeah. Coming up, y'all coming up <laughs> so with if you say no, you say no. you're doing to the idea. You y'all, not building, y'all not building on, on, on the solutions. You, you feel what I'm saying? You can't just be ignorant and be like, oh, this I'm is I'm not being work. ignorant, y'all. I'm just telling y'all the, yeah. the difference. I'm just talking about business. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. all. You, you know you know to, business. But you still have to think about the problem. I feel you, but those are not Because if that, why ain't it? That's a viable problem, though, because here's the thing. Jay, if he says no, what's next? True. If if that's the case, why they would have yeah, if something yeah. would have been in place already. Two yeah. Chainz just made a whole album. I mean, a song about this shit. R- rapper go to the league. Yeah, yeah. Like, he made a song about. Yeah. These, we yeah. know these athletes are not. We know that this is a problem. Yeah. So why take your power it? back as yeah. an athlete? You have to put. It, your it starts with them. About, yeah. All we talking about is bringing money in. I yeah. gave y'all a solution what I thought would bring money in, and mm-hmm. the solution for the way money's coming in, it has nothing to do with. Any regulations, any grants, or anything like that. Because so, you're not considering that, no, what I I'm can say you to walk straight down the street. But if it's a wall right there, you're not gonna be able to walk. It can stop wall. you. Yeah, yeah, it can stop you. I, I, I feel all that. I, I, I get y'all. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like all I'm basically saying is, when you're bringing in money from a from a from a product, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? No, no business deal that you can make when it comes to doing business can tell you. No other owner can tell you what to do with your earnings. With your profit, you're right. You feel what I'm mm-hmm. saying? That's period. Mm-hmm. If it's a grant. People can tell you this is where the money needs to go. Because he gave you that. You're not getting this grant anymore. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Right. I'm not talking about that. Right. I I, I feel y'all. Right. And that's true. The schooling is that. We're just talking about doing business. Mm -hmm. We're talking about, and whether or not the business is even allowed, Mm -hmm. I don't know. We don't even know that. You know what I'm saying? But we're talking about if the business is allowed, if Mm -hmm. they are allowed to make money, then, you know, that's what I'm I'm saying. In this situation, starting up, who has the leverage? The school? 
Right. right. For example, Jay Z. The starting up, starting up. The Jay Z has the leverage. Yeah. Jay Z. That's not even a question. Jay-Z but when they donate, the, they just give title. it to the Jay-Z school and, and they the will say, "Do Fact. what you guys want to do with it." They don't yes. put any stipulations. Yes. So, on to answer it. your question, to answer your question, yeah. yes. To yeah, question, that we yes. see. So because, because you know, they be getting builders named after them. Oh, listen. Yeah, yeah. So they have them. They have the leverage. They basically control the, the details of the contract. Yeah. No, they don't. Yes, they do. <laughs> Bro, the, you're getting the money from him. <laughs> you're getting the money. You need me. <laughs> he don't listen, need listen, you. It is. Listen, <laughs> listen, y'all, I hear what y'all saying. Yeah. I hear what y'all saying. I but I hear what y'all saying. I, yeah. I hear what y'all saying. But where there's no deal. If any smart businessman is not going to do a deal where it's not mutually beneficial. You feel what I'm saying? So, it is, it is mutually beneficial. So, hear what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, if you're talking about who has the leverage, it's mutually beneficial for both parties. That's why Jay Z would do it or he wouldn't do it. You understand what I'm saying? So, at the end of the day, we're talking about uh, the leverage for the school is that it's our school. What we do, we're at HBCU. It's a brand. We have we we have a brand. There's a. Uh, the athletes are coming here, mm-hmm. so there's a there's a few benefits and, wh- and whatever other leverage he mm-hmm. thinks about or why it would be beneficial. Mm-hmm. The initial money is the investment that he makes. So mm-hmm. let's say it's two hundred two million to mm-hmm. one hundred million. Mm-hmm. The, the the deal would probably say something around the lines of we're going to take this amount of from the profit until we get this amount back in mm-hmm. however many years that it takes us to do this. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You guys will make this percentage from whatever we make. Whoop de whoop, whatever. Mm-hmm. The school then has the choice whether or not they want to take whatever earnings they make and mm-hmm. when it goes into the school's funding mm-hmm. account to do whatever they want to do with whatever money they decide to do with it. If Jay decides to continue and, oh, you know what, I want to put some money into education now, that's a whole nother topic, that's a whole nother ball game. You know what I'm saying? Well, right now... So, when, uh, hold on, I mean, my bad. No, 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 yeah, no, 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 you fine, is he? No, 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 it's all right. you good. It was something she said earlier about the, uh, the, the Georgia State and the, what's the name? Oh, yeah. you're talking you know about I mean? the uh, College of Business, how it looks different than how yeah. the College of Education I'm not saying, like I'm not saying that it won't like, like it's going to just up everything. I'm yeah. saying, but it is going to trickle down to, mm-hmm. to, to oh, making yeah, it to, better than what yeah. it is mm-hmm. right now. Right. Well, that's true. Um, right now, we just need for people to realize that HBCUs are in dire straits. <laughs> and something has to be done. And something has yeah, to be done. Yeah. Beyonce gave last year um, $100,000 to four schools. That's a good she, tax write off for it, too. When she did the Lemonade Tour. Yeah. And now I guess they may do it again. It might be something that she does every year. She donated a hundred thousand dollars to four HBCUs, and they H- they they gave each student twenty five thousand dollars scholarship. Um, nice. They had to maintain it. Well, they had to maintain a three point five GPA or higher, and um, they let the colleges and universities select which ones they wanted to give the money to. Nice. Um, another thing that we we're going to talk about was Russell Wilson. Yeah. And um, he was given a very good... 140. Contract. 140 And then he announced it in bed with his wife. With chains on. On Instagram. Russell Wilson, no, he don't be rocking chains. That's the first time I've ever seen him with about he five chains in, on. And he, we was like, that's Y'all how. go to bed. <laughs> Y'all go to bed. He was like, yeah. He, <laughs> he had on his sexy voice. Yeah. Late like, night on yeah. the phone with your boo, that type of voice. Yeah, he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah y'all. <laughs> and what did he say? We got a deal. We got a deal. <laughs> and Caleb was like, why was he talking like that? I don't know he why was he was like, talking like that. He don't even he, talk like that. He really talks like that. And what y'all see. Oh, yeah. That, that was a good point. I you said that's right. That what he really talked like. He really probably does talk like that. And what y'all see, like the after game voice is like your customer service voice when you're at work. He's at work. <laughs> but Russell probably yeah. be at home like, word CF. Right. <laughs> he probably be like, word CC. Hey, I was caught come off in, guard. Shouty. Right. You <laughs> probably be home like, come in, shout like, at the press conference is completely different. <laughs> I was so caught off guard. Like when I saw like the five chains on, they were trying to talk with a deep voice, they're trying to be laid they back. They was playing, they was role playing. That was hilarious. But um, I'm happy for him. Your boy uh got arrested the other day too, last week, and he got out. He got out on bail. Uh oh. Izzy, it's your time, bro. Oh, That's Izzy. Type- <laughs> no, look, listen, listen. Let's not promote the down the downfall of the black man. Yep. He's out, I say. Let's not promote the downfall right. of the black man. Kim, she don't want to hear that. Hey, when it happened, Kim was I'm ready. Tell you what happened. Kim was ready. I wasn't gonna say anything. Kim was like, I told y'all. The fact that the man got out. That's it. I told y'all. And you know, I saw. My only question is, is there a way for Kodak, or how is it possible that he keeps getting arrested, but he's not? Facing serious jail time. Because the the arrest mm-hmm. comes 
way before the trial. Okay. And he probably keeps getting postponements and continuances. Ooh, that's stressful, man. And it's all going to, you know, eventually come down. You can have that's a stressful. trial date or a court date that's a year from now. That's stressful. Wow. I pray for him, man. He's young and he doesn't need to be caught that up in that. That was another conversation that I wanted to just have. Yeah. So what is old and what's young? I mean, what do you consider an OG? Because see, now people are saying T.I. is an OG and he shouldn't be. And Tiff, so, he's and, what? And he's like 38? Def- and everyone's defending Kodak Black saying he's young and he's just 21. So you mean to tell me that 38, between the ages of 21 and 38, a man knows all he needs to know, which you could be considered an OG already? And, you know, when we found out Fred... That he was, what, 20? Fred Hampton. Pop was 25. So, I think it depends on the person. Maturity levels, all that. But Codex life, God willing. Y'all don't even look at that. Y'all look yeah. at the person's age and be like, oh, you don't want to hear nothing they got to say because they're old. And you say that about T.I., his music is already on the throwback station. <laughs> yeah. So, what do millennials consider to be OG? Because if you're 40 or if you're 35... And you yeah, out here living your be best life. We you ain't the first be... people that said OG. Can't be hating us. Yeah, like, <laughs> we ain't the first people that said, who was y'all OG? Because here's the thing, who, Nick. Who, who, who was y'all OG, Kim? Who, what, cause what, you know, what was considered as OG in your time? Cool, hurt. Is Rock Kim OG? Was Rock Kim OG? No. Who was an OG in your time? Grandmaster Flash. We didn't have them. We just, hip hop just okay, started. But, but you got to think, you're not a man. Not you're not a man culture. either. Women don't have OGs. Yeah. We do. We, we have aunties. I have aunties, but y'all don't have OGs. Yeah. Who was your auntie back then? Wendy Williams. She even back your then? Age frame. <laughs> yeah. That's that's like, even back excuse then. Excuse me. She's not my age. Well, she's in that frame. Yeah. She's not she's not 20 okay, years so older than you. What are age frames? There's a, a period of what? You guys have not you have to it's, tell I don't me. know if there's no stipu- no age stipulation. I was gonna say that too because it's somebody you, you might look up to. Because I would say Nip one one could say that he's an OG to some people. Because although he wasn't old, but Wendy I mean Williams he's thirty three. Way older than me, and she's not in. And Kodak and and Ti are in that window with each other's age more than me and her. Years? OG, OG she's years? with uh, OG. Really, is like some. It's not us one specific age. It's mm-hmm. uh, how old a person is compared to you. So I, I yeah, exactly. Maybe somebody like maybe ten years older than you, or like five to ten years older. Is he? Than you he could count as one for me. Yeah, Jay Black. I, I mean, five me six OG years. When I'm on the but you court. don't. I, look, a five, six year age difference? When I'm cooking people. But I would say that. Because it's someone who's like an older brother, father figure somewhat, or older. Right, right, right. Yeah, like, like, you don't have to be to 20 him. years older somebody, than somebody. somebody you look up so to. you right. should look up to him just because he's older? No, but uh, wisdom, they, experience. No, T.I. is somebody that's like, as a rapper. Yeah. Kodak Ti would be somebody Kodak looks up to. Right. Ti as a rapper, yeah, yeah. he's had a successful career. You feel okay. me? He's so been like, through things. Yeah. yeah like, so he has experience. That's somebody he will be considered an OG. Right. Right. Rap, he's a, he considered cool, an OG in the rap game. Yeah. Ti wouldn't be considered my so OG. I'm not a rapper. Should, right. Right. There yeah, you go. Like, so it depends him. on the field he that you're in. Him, then and he should give him his respect and he should he listen should, to what he don't have to. Yeah. You should respect the people regardless. Right. I should still a human being, well. right? And and that's what people don't talk about. Older people yeah. still got to respect. Like chill, don't. Because here's the thing: what was Ti doing when he was Kodak's age? Like he was getting arrested. So, so he has every right to try to tell him what's right and what's wrong. I would do it privately, though. I would do it privately. I would right. do it privately. Would I'm not feel, gonna post it. How would you feel if somebody from Tim Buck Two? Your, your daughter say something She might have just said something wild Like it might have not been the, the craziest thing But they come at her And attacking her Like you need to do this You as a parent You don't need to tell my daughter What to do <laughs> yeah. You gonna feel some type of way Yeah It ain't like T.I. On social media too that. They not yeah. two different states. He don't even know this guy Like I would crazy. just call him I would just call him And they on bad terms already Yeah I would have just called him And that's the problem he and that's the he problem. Want to, he doesn't like his energy. But but still talk to him. Yeah, exactly. He another black I'm man. On him. He's another black man. And look, here's the thing. We got to stop being, and we talked about this earlier, we got to stop being emotional and reactionary just because you don't like somebody. Forget all that, bro. You still a man, and y'all still need to sit down and talk. I think that T.I. has right. taken it upon himself to be the 
He's saying that pun himself. The like no one's music, nominated. The trap music gatekeeper. Ti has only spoke on two ins- on the instances that where he had has a personal. personal problem. Him, him and Floyd. Had, yeah, he had a personal issue person. with Floyd. Him and Floyd. Him and Kodak. Those are personal it's vendettas. Not genuine. That he that he that he made them. Like he he go off on this. I mess with Tip though. And then yeah. people don't know that it be backstory behind both people. So yeah. who do you think? It should be the ones, or who do you think, or should there be the somebody that mics. checks people? No, for their you, shit? Are, you don't check, check people behind closed doors. You don't check nobody. Yeah, like, have think, a conversation. I think it should be it should be no checking. I feel like it's a conversation. Kodak no more. You don't listen to him. It should be nothing. Kodak should just see his his, his uh, music drop. What yeah. you what did you just you just said it? Ignore it. Yeah, Ignore like, what you don't yeah. want to. Yeah, like, just keep it pushing. You have control. You like, online, unfollow, guess what now? In your personal. Yes. But and Kodak, he got more clout everybody. from that. You want to persuade everybody to follow what That's you the like. problem. He's talking about it every day. Right. Because everybody want to persuade these people. And now it's growing. You know? yep. like, how, many people, like how many people from Nip family said something about that? Right. Hey, they kept it cool. Lauren, she didn't even say anything about it. Amongst themselves. But listen, yeah, behind closed doors. So we do know, you think but listen, that we know how many people Nip uh, uh, impacted. Yeah. He had the rolling 60 Crips. Hey, you, don't, you don't hear no Crips coming out. Talking about, I'm going to kill Kodak. I'm to go see Kodak. Yeah. If they don't have a problem with it, why is T.I. the spokesperson Because for I think two things, man, right yeah. now. So well, do you think that people take the opportunity when yes. stuff like this happens yes. to yeah. just put something just to, like, keep it going? Yeah. Emotions. Yeah. Or, or whoever wrote it for him. They said it very well. Hey, they said it very well. And and two, uh, Malcolm X even said this back in the '60s, and it's sad that we still got the same issues. Oh, you use a black man to kill another black man. And two, and still blame it on them. Also, um, when he said, I think it was the uh, ballot or the bullet speech that if we have problems when it comes to politics, religion, even problems that it can be simple stuff, don't do it in front of other people do it behind closed doors because we got to be one every single time that we step outside because we look stupid in front of white people that we can't even mourn nips death because we focused say on that because you know when you say that people are going to say well who are they why are we got to try well to well them? but look just period but kim think about this smaller if you and your daughter, you would rather y'all argue behind closed doors or you and your boyfriend rather argue behind closed doors than argue in public yeah. because that's a bad yeah, look. That's family. That's house. That's, that's a bad look. House. You you, 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 you and house. your brothers, when you guys fight, you would rather fight at home than fight in front of all your friends yeah. because at the end of the day, when y'all step outside, y'all are a unit. Inside, that's different. And, and I think with Tip, him being older, why not just call Kodak or say, hey, let's meet okay, up and talk? Okay, so then, yeah, okay, so that's, it takes the, that's that. the thing. Or just ignore it. Or, or just ignore it. Ignore hey, you have plenty of options. Me, hey, you got plenty of options. Ignore him. Like, I offer advice as a young person, but just don't come to me like you think you know everything else. Like, I'm all for learning. Yeah. I can be ignorant not to, but when you try to talk down to me. You're trying to humiliate me. You're trying yeah. to humiliate me. Right. You're going on a platform where you got a million some people watching you. Right. You, you're putting on a show now. Ego. Yeah. You're putting on a show. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, well, I'm sure that's and bro, to that's be fair, him. Kodak said that in the comforts of his house. I'll give him that. He said that in his own house. He was just on live. He should have been smarter. He made a mistake. But but I he, think he needs a new people. No, he does. But but I think that that's what discourages most young people because it's like if I ever make a mistake, I can get humiliated. I can get banned. But these same people, they were making the same dumb mistakes. Ti, he got arrested with guns in his crib. Think about like, it. Think about it. If Kodak was weak, he, he probably could have killed himself over this. Yeah. He could have commi- committed suicide. Because he could have been like, getting oh, DMs. Everybody attacking me. Yeah. That's some shit he could have committed suicide over. Yeah. But people cyber don't look bullying. That. Yeah, that's that cyber bullying. Cy- it's weak. Yeah. He's, weak. He's a kid. People really yeah. were coming real hard at everybody on both sides. About that's what I'm this. saying. It's really, like, it's just, we just got to chill. I think, okay, as a person that's older than even as a... T.I. because he would be mm-hmm. younger than me and if I was to have to give him some advice I would tell him too I'm proud of him I like everything yeah I'm doing. super proud of him I tip. understand him trying to raise the elevation of the culture yep. and the mindset yep. and try to establish some ground rules as to mm-hmm. what's not acceptable and what is acceptable right but social media might not be the way there you but go yeah. why does he feel like he has to have a have to a say, say something. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. And maybe there's yeah, something going yeah. on with him behind the scenes in his career where 
he is trying to he's trying to turn himself his image around right and he's done that very he very has he's just like is now he's trying too hard right yeah We're not at, it's like expeditiously <laughs> it's expeditiously like you know how you know how like killer mike and david they do it effortlessly it's like yeah. it's just them talking just talking, just talking normal it's right. just like Tip, he be using the big words it's not it's not saying that's who that's not who yeah. tie is yeah. like he's a i feel like he's a great man awesome from what dude. i see yeah. but Somebody said ever since Ted been speaking proper English, he thinks he's the social media police. <laughs> <laughs> to my to my point, I'm gonna just this is what I made mention to yesterday, uh, or to John on John John's uh, thing. I feel like uh, it's the music that we as a culture respect, mm. and so if if Ti start dropping some hot hot music, mm -hmm. then we gonna equate what he's his his outspokenness to his music, and then we gonna yeah, be looking put at that him energy as a, as, in his music. But the fact okay. that he's not. We're looking at T.I. now like, all right, what are you doing? Here? Nagging. What yeah, are you he's just doing saying, here, yeah. Like, yeah. you know, you were supposed yeah. to be an artist. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, just give us, if, um, if T.I. drops some heat on the radio, whatever he drops. That'll be different. Or an album. I'm yeah, that's true. But that's what we know that's it for, true. though. A lot of people don't know Killer Mike for, for the, I'm talking about just normal yeah, people. Like, you right. know, so yeah. a lot of people don't know Killer Mike for his music. Yeah. I mean, Run the Jewels fans. He's got Run yeah, the Jewels. Yeah, but that's more like yeah, underground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And like then, you got to be a real hip hop head to to even know who Run the Jewels. Killer Mike is, Run the Jewels, all that stuff. David Banner, like you had to be around like in the early two thousands to to actually know David Banner. I was around. Yeah, I remember David I know Banner, them. Mississippi. And those are my some of my favorite people in the world. But yep. I also am a huge Ti fan just because he so shows the different side and what growing up is going to be like. Yeah. All right, y'all. So um, we're going to wrap it up. Yes. Oh, I think Oh, we talked about the sports thing already. Mm -hmm. um, I hope you guys have a good week. Yes. Make sure you follow Innovative Black Station on all social media platforms. Most Make definitely. Sure you cop a shirt. Yeah. Hey, we got the red. No, there's all different colors. Yeah, now. the red, the blue. And yellow. I'm about to re-up for the summer. Yeah, I told Beyonce them to give me yellow. a red one. Yeah. Beyonce Is yellow. there a blue one, right? Yeah, a royal yeah. blue one. I don't know. I'm I like that blue. blue. Yeah, um, I like that blue. That's called the Nipsey, Nipsey blue. blue. Yeah, we got Nipsey really? blue, the YG red, <laughs> the Beyonce yellow, and the Are J really black. Are you serious? Yeah, the J black. <laughs> that's creative. Oh, that's cute. That's so it. um I'm not sure which one I'm gonna get, but I need a new one. I'm I going said with that red. blue. They going fast. Yeah. I ain't even get I'm I'm I, I didn't get a blue one for myself. <laughs> it's crazy. Hey, I love that blue. I'm Make thinking sure about getting that, that blue. Um, we yeah. are on we have an app. Make sure you download it on your Google Play and your Apple. I still can't find mine. I my Google with Play. With the podcast. Yeah. But also on YouTube. We are everywhere. You look yeah, for us. You play it at a gym, play it in the car. Make sure you follow us on yep. CTD underscore ATL on Instagram. And yep. I promise I'll check your messages because I just found out that there were three messages in there. And yep. I replied to yep. you guys. So keep supporting us. Yes. We are here. We ain't going nowhere. Right. Thanks for taking your time to listen to us. We really appreciate Most every definitely. listener, every watcher. Most and definitely. keep in touch. Have yes. a good week, y'all. See you next week. Peace. Peace.